Unit 4, page 85. What should you be eating? Let's look at the text. What should you be eating? The weight loss industry is a very large, profitable and growing industry. Modern lifestyles often cause weight gain and obesity, leading to an influx of weight loss plans and products into the market. It is widely accepted that weight gain or loss depends on food intake and exercise. To put it briefly, weight change is equal to calories in minus calories out. A healthy eating pyramid helps to demonstrate how a balanced diet can be achieved. The following form the bricks of a healthy eating pyramid. Whole grains. Healthy carbohydrates take longer for the body to digest. This helps to prevent any sudden rise and fall of blood sugar levels and insulin in the body. Healthy carbohydrates help prevent type 2 diabetes and heart diseases. The benefits of healthy carbohydrates are the reason why they are placed at the base of the food pyramid. Some sources of healthy carbohydrates are oatmeal, brown rice and whole wheat bread. Healthy fats and oils. It is a myth that all fats should be avoided. Some fats are healthy and required for a balanced diet. They help control cholesterol and prevent heart diseases. This explains why fats appear so close to the base of the food pyramid. Healthy fats can be found in olives, nuts, seeds, sunflower, peanuts, and fatty fish such as salmon. Fruits and vegetables. The next group of food items to appear on the food pyramids, sorry, food pyramid, are fruits and vegetables. A diet rich in fruits and vegetables has innumerable benefits. It can decrease the chances of having a heart attack or stroke, possibly protect against some types of cancers, lower blood pressure, help you avoid the painful intestinal ailment called diverticulitis, and guard against cataract and macular degeneration, the major causes of vision loss amongst people over the age of 65. Potatoes do not belong to this category on the food pyramid. This is because their effect on blood sugar is similar to that of grains and sweets. Fish, poultry and eggs. Fish is an important source of protein and is rich in omega-3 fatty acids which are known to prevent heart disease. Chicken and turkey are low in saturated fats when compared to red meat. Eggs too provide protein and are a good supplement to breakfast. Those suffering from diabetes or heart ailments should avoid the yolk of the egg and consume only the egg whites in omelettes and baked products. Dairy For generations, we have believed that dairy products are good for growing bones as they contain calcium and vitamin D. Then why are they placed near the narrow part of the food pyramid suggesting limited intake? The primary reason for this is that the body needs more vitamin D than even three glasses of milk can provide. 
At the same time, three glasses of milk contain more calcium than is required for the human body. It is now understood that there are better sources of vitamin D for the body than milk and cheese, which may also be high in saturated fats. Two servings of dairy a day should be sufficient. Red meats, processed meats and butter. These foods should be consumed very sparingly. Red meats and processed meats like bacon and sausages contain high levels of sodium. They increase the risk of diabetes, heart diseases and colon cancer. Switching to fish, chicken, nuts and beans is a much healthier choice. Similarly, switching from butter to olive oil is also a healthier option. Refined grains, sugary drinks, sweets and salt. Refined grains include white bread, rice and pasta. Potatoes too fall into this category of foods that should be eaten very sparingly. These items are high in sodium and increase the risk of heart diseases and result in weight gain. This is because refined grains and sugary drinks cause an accelerated increase in blood sugar levels. Whole grains like wheat and brown rice cause a more gradual increase in blood sugar. The body is better equipped to handle a gradual rise in blood sugar levels. Foods that are rich in salt like potato chips, cheese and sauces contain high sodium levels that may lead to heart attack and stroke. When buying food, check the labels and choose the ones with the lowest sodium content. You'll notice that the healthy eating pyramid does not give specific advice about the number of cups or ounces of specific food items that one should have on a daily basis. That's because it's not meant to be a rigid roadmap and the amounts can vary depending on your body size and physical activity. It's a simple, general and flexible guide to how you should eat when you eat. Page 89. We're looking at grammar now. Redundancies and cliches. Redundancies. While speaking or writing, clear and concise communication is essential for the audience to comprehend the message. One of the ways in which clarity can be ensured is by avoiding redundancy in writing and speech. Look at the following sentence. At this point of time, it now becomes absolutely necessary for us to consider alternative methods for completing the project. Though the sentence is grammatically correct, unnecessary words have been used. At this point of time and now mean the same. Necessary means something that is essential and hence absolutely does not add to the meaning. Therefore, the sentence can be rewritten as follows. It has now become necessary for us to consider alternative methods for completing the project. Similarly, look at the following sentence. In addition to the yearly increment, the employees got an added bonus. Bonus refers to an amount of money added to the wages and hence added does not extend the meaning in any way. So the sentence can be rewritten as, in addition to the yearly increment, the employees got a bonus. Eliminating redundancies is all about putting forth your point in as few words as possible. The best way to eliminate redundancy is to go through your draft of both written and spoken communication, such as letters, reports, speeches, etc., and to make sure that there are no superfluous words or phrases. Now let's look at the blue box on the top. Redundancy refers to the use of 
unnecessary words or phrases in spoken or written communication. Phrases like crisis situation for crisis, end result for outcome, and safe haven for haven are examples of redundancies that are used very often. Redundancies should be avoided for clarity and brevity in communication. So, I hope you understand that to be redundant means to be unnecessary. Okay. Now let's move to the next part of this lesson. <coughs> Here are some examples and useful pointers on eliminating redundancy. You have types of redundancy and then the examples. The first one is absolute values. Adjectives that express an absolute state do not have different degrees of intensity. For example, it is absolutely necessary to adopt a scientific approach towards regular fitness programs and dieting. Can we rewritten as it is necessary to adopt a scientific approach towards regular fitness programs and dieting. The next example, the drawing was absolutely perfect. There's a cliche, uh, sorry, there's a redundancy here. So the correct way of saying it would be the drawing was perfect. Next, acronyms. Spelling out the last words of common acronyms must be avoided. For instance, ATM refers to automatic telemachine. So in the phrase ATM machine, machine becomes redundant. Other examples are ISBN number and PAN number. So they should just be ISBN and Pan. Next, avoiding the use of words like back and together where such meanings have already been implied. For example, to understand this point better, refer back to the lecture notes of the previous class. So here, back is redundant. It should be written as to understand this point better, refer to the lecture notes of the previous class. Next example. During the alumni meet, the old students reflected back on the time they had spent in college. The correct way of writing it would be, During the al alumni meet, the old students reflected on the time they had spent in college, not reflected back. Next example. The two entities were merged together to form a big corporation. Here, together is unnecessary or redundant. So, the two entities were merged to form a big corporation. Let's move to page 91, task 3. Identify and delete the redundant words or phrases from these sentences. Please pause the video. Do the exercise and then we will discuss the answers. 1. In the earlier days, there was a consensus of opinion that the earth was flat. The redundant phrase is of opinion. So remove those words. Number two, the end result of the rainwater harvesting initiatives was that the level of groundwater improved dramatically. The word end is redundant. Three, foreign imports during the financial year 2017 to 18 reduced considerably. Foreign is redundant. So please remove it. Number four, it is better that the assessments are postponed until later. Here, the redundant phrase is until later. Five, 
Edmund Halley, the astronomer, compiled together a chart on trade winds and monsoons in 1686. The word together is redundant, so please remove it. 6. This phone is a better choice because it has a RAM memory of 4 GB. Memory is redundant, so remove that. A cliché refers to an expression or idea which has been used so much that it has lost its freshness and effect. When too many clichés are used in writing or in speech, the audience tends to lose interest in the message being conveyed. In fact, clichés become a barrier to clarity in communication since they can distort our original message. Hence, clichés are to be avoided, especially in formal contexts of communication. Some examples of cliches at the end of the day or acid test as light as a feather cold hard facts dark horse stones throw etc. We can avoid using cliches in our communication by Identifying the cliched expression or expressions in a sentence. Thinking about what a cliché means by checking the keywords or phrases. Deciding whether the expression adds to the meaning in any way. Rewriting the sentence without the cliché. Look at the following example. In the present day and age, people are increasingly sharing recipes for healthy food on the internet. The expression in the present day and age refers to the present time. So a better substitute for the cliched expression would be nowadays. The sentence would now read, nowadays people are increasingly sharing recipes for healthy food on the internet. Similarly, look at the following sentence. At the end of the day, it is for the individual to decide whether he can have a positive approach to failures in life. The expression at the end of the day refers to finally or ultimately. So those words would be better substitutes for this cliched expression. The sentence would now read, ultimately it is for the individual to decide whether he can have a positive approach to failures in life life. Page 92, task 4. Rewrite these sentences avoiding the cliches used. Please do it on your own and then we will discuss. Number 1. During the monsoon, the road behind my house should be avoided like the plague since it tends to get waterlogged. So the cliche here is like the plague. Remove the, those words. Okay. Number two, Ravi, who is always an early bird, submitted his assignment much before the deadline. You can remove the words who is always an early bird. Three. Malpractice during the examinations will not be tolerated in any way, shape or form. You can just avoid in any way, shape or form. The movie was an edge of the seat thriller. Remove edge of the seat. Okay, remove edge of the seat. The movie was a thriller. Number five, regular exercise and proper diet ensure that one remains as healthy as a horse. Remove as healthy as a horse and just write healthy. Okay. 
and please remember it is not healthy it is healthy similarly it is not wealthy it is wealthy right